If you are new to globetrotting, why not hit that subscribe button, pushing for 60,000 this year, and your support would be greatly appreciated. The A350 is one of the industry's leading wide-body offerings for airline customers seeking to evolve their fleet and cater to increasing long-haul demand. Since entering the industry, this wide-body has, it's safe to say, been a hit, and substantial commitments have been secured from airlines right around the world. Furthermore, at some companies, it has proven to be a reliable, but also efficient means to really say goodbye to some of your quad-engined aircraft. However, Airbus is not moving uncontested in this new market, and Boeing's upcoming 777X aims to disrupt it and provide an efficient alternative to the A350. But what are the advantages of each aircraft? What are the fundamental differences? And maybe which plane actually has the advantage? Well, first of all, the 777X is the next evolution of the highly successful 777 series, which entered the industry, you may recall, in the 1990s. It aims to be a game changer for twin engine flying across high capacity and long range routes. The 777X will enter with two primary passenger variants in the Dash 8 model and the Dash 9. The latter is catered to customers requiring additional capacity and has also been the most successful of the two variants. The Dash 8 has really struggled to attract meaningful attention. The plane has many improvements. It was designed as a response to the A350, but also enhancing the long haul product in an industry that was shifting away from some of your ultra-high capacity planes. Key innovations include its folding wingtips, which allow the aircraft to be more efficient in the air and fit into pre-built gates at airports right around the world. Moreover, highly efficient but also large GENX engines are really set to break the boundaries previously laid out. The Airbus A350, on the other hand, was created as a clean sheet design to compete with Boeing and enhance its own wide-body products, which were only continuing to dominate. Available in two variants, the A350-900 and the A350-1000, including other derivatives, look to address airlines' requirements for not just efficient travel, but also trying to find a great balance between comfort and long range in an industry that demands that. Its use of lightweight carbon fiber reinforced materials across the airframe help reduce weight and improve the economy for fuel, making it a very popular option for airlines looking into their fleet for the future. While the two aircraft aircraft do share their similarities, each will ultimately offer airlines something different, which will play a defining factor in the final decision. As the plane maker advertises, the 777X can seat up to 426 passengers in a two-class configuration, that is for the larger Dash 9 model, with the Dash 8 model seating a more modest 384 thanks to its reduced fuselage size or length. This capacity is compared to the A350-1000, which is more equipped to seat the late 300 to early 400s at a maximum, whereas the 900 is more looking at your low to mid 300s. The 7778 has a range of around 16,000, whereas the 7779 comes in at a little bit shorter. But see, many people still believe that the Boeing 779 is a more suitable option for companies as you really strike that perfect balance between capacity and range for most routes nowadays. The A350 comes equipped with 15,000 and 16,000 kilometers there or abouts for your Dash 900 and Dash 1000 model, although this will always vary depending on how your airline looks to configure the plane, your weight, and so much more. While the fuel burn metric is certainly important, it will fluctuate as I touched on. As such, it isn't really possible to come to a firm conclusion for both old generation and new generation planes. It really is down to how the airlines are planning on operating them. Both aircraft obviously come with two engines. From a length and wingspan perspective, on your screen now are really the core differences. For this purpose, I'm going to look at the Boeing 7779 and the A350-1000, you'll really get a gauge for the length and so forth. Why are airlines buying these planes? Well, both aircraft are targeting the long haul and ultra long haul at times markets offering an adequate balance for airlines that are trying to boost their range but also focus on efficiency which we know to be incredibly important nowadays. The 777X provides a compelling case for those that are seeking more capacity driven markets and this is particularly emphasized through the 7779 with the variant's ability to seat over 400 passengers. It can respond to markets with significant demand for airlines that of course still operate a hub and spoke model but it shouldn't just be limited to those customers. The A350 with 
its slightly smaller capacity but still having great performance metrics can allow airlines greater flexibility across their route network. For airlines that may already fly the Dash 900 model, they could seek the Dash 1000 for that high capacity flying and really be able to achieve great fleet commonality. While the 787 does exist, it's more of a modest widebody you would consider. Generally, the two aircraft I'm focusing in on today are your only ones available to airlines that are seeking to replace their aging quad engine planes. Nowadays, aircraft manufacturers have really moved away from these type of planes which are deemed inefficient, and as a result, your 777X and A350 are broadly considered the only alternatives. Airlines must determine which option then best suits their business through RFPs and also establishing relationships with the customer in question. Maybe they can get a fantastic deal or like I touched on a little bit earlier, their focus is on fleet commonality. Ultimately, many factors can influence however an airline's decision to use one aircraft type over the other. I've briefly touched on them but each airline's perspective will differ. Therefore, the end destination will also differ based on the circumstances. Factors influencing a decision can include everything I've talked about. And on top of that, you've got the price point, business optimization, and what we can't forget is the delivery time frame. Airlines that are operating Boeing aircraft, particularly in the classic 777, may look to gravitate towards the 777X for its operations and pilot training continuity. They believe that given the X model is the perfect replacement, it'll be a seamless entry into service. And in a similar fashion, Airbus operators may lean towards the A350, and while that's a clean sheet and not replacing, say, an A350CO, they may look for some form of commonality. While these aircraft types are destined to compete, their uses also cannot always overlap. Perfect example is Emirates. They will leverage the 777X and the A350 to work in harmony. They see the A350 as actually a more modest widebody, and I guess you've got to consider this to be a fantastic point for an airline that flies the A380. They see this 350 as being perfect for more of your regional international markets, whereas the eventual arrival of the 777X will have capacity on its side. One avenue that remains more relevant than ever is delivery timeframes. While Airbus has largely delivered A350s on schedule, I say largely because there are definitely delays that have been encountered, they are absolutely nowhere near what the 777X has experienced. These delays and heightened scrutiny of the product has frustrated prospective customers and even existing ones, and whether you like it or not, can sometimes force an airline to change allegiances and move over to Airbus with a plane that is thriving, proven, and more importantly, being delivered. As for your order performance, it's a bit hard to really compare this. While I can give you the figures and say that the A350 program has over 1,300 orders and the 777X has quite a significant less amount than that. One plane has been flying for now almost a decade, whereas the other is yet to even operate a scheduled passenger flight. Yes, in saying that, the 777X has been around for 12 years and hasn't flown, but we haven't seen it launch. Also worth considering, the 777 isn't necessarily an old aircraft type with many airlines, such as the Dash 300 ER. And for most, they're actually not looking at moving on these planes as of yet. You'll expect 777X orders to pick up in due course, and and certainly the ability to certify this plane will be huge in doing that. While Boeing sometimes struggles to attract orders, the plane's certification will certainly play a role. And if anything, the last few years have actually been a big positive for the 777X, despite everything we've seen take shape. Many airlines have either placed orders or are in the process of considering it. But which aircraft wins? Well, as we now are at the midway point of the 2020s, these two aircraft remain important pillars of many airlines' future and current international networks. But the thing is, only one remains certified. While the 777X has the appeal and has fantastic economics, it remains uncertified and unproven regarding airline usage. The A350 is proven to fly globally and is continuously being delivered. It's therefore got the head start in the market and has more credibility, you'd argue. This gap, however, will lie likely shrink, and while some would say Boeing's fault because the delays are on them, we do need the 777X to launch to really see how airlines fare. As I touched on right at the beginning of this video, the beautiful thing about aviation is each case is different. One airline will say that the 777X would be an absolute disaster for them, whereas the other, it'll be the best aircraft they'll ever get their hands on. There are so many things that go into an airline picking an aircraft, and while we can have a look at the specifications and say, well, this plane offers more capacity 
capacity, there's more into it than just that. Have a look at what airline executives say and much more. It's fascinating. So take care, be safe. Let me know your thoughts on the two aircraft that will really be the driving force moving forward for your long haul international market. Thanks for watching. Do take care, do be safe, and I'll see you in a couple of days for more analysis here on Globetrotting. And we'll fly.